welcome to the Cheltenham Exchange Day 2 video for the Saturday of the Coral Meeting at Newbury. Yes, I'm Ian Rayner. Yes, I'm hosting again, as I've picked race one out the draw again. Sadly, we have a dropout with Matty working again. So as well as our two special guests, we have reined in an old Irish friend. Our first guest is Ash Simmons, who is a university student and a University of Gloucester, a columnist for the Cheltenham Post, and is one third of the Only Falls Love Horses channel. Our second guest is Andrew Hannigan, who is the straight talking member of the Finishing Line podcast. Andrew started the channel around five years ago, and with Dave and Tom alongside, they're one of the top social media channels to not only cover jumps racing, but horse racing full stop. Lastly, our old friend Jamie Wren is back. Jamie, you may know from content with Dave on the Chip Mental channel, but has also helped us out a lot. So we owe him a big thank you since we started the channel over a year ago. So enjoy the video and let's get on with the pics. Hello again. So I'm covering the 1215 Coral Mare's Hurdle. And my choice, probably come as no surprise, is Lucia. So Lucia will be with James Bowen this time, as Nico will be in Newcastle. Uh, and it's another Henderson horse for me. And Lucia will be in the Pump and Plant Services Colours. So a bit of background with Lucia. She won her first bumper at Warwick in January this year, beating the Tom Lacey horse Blow Your Wad by six lengths. Now, Lucia, uh, with her second appearance at Sandown, is the one that caught everybody's eyes when she won the bumper by an impressive 17 lengths. The Mullins horse, excuse my pronunciation, I believe is Abe Grace, was in second place. But since that race, Mullenbeck, who was fourth, has come out and won two mares hurdle races at Plumpton and Fakenham. Melina Jamila, who was fifth, has won a class four maiden hurdle at Huntington. And Nifty Getaway, who was ninth, has also come out and won a class four mares hurdle at Newton Abbott. So the film line isn't too bad. The only concern I have is obviously with the good ground and with the weather. The She will need soft ground. So it depends on what the weather will be like in the coming days. I believe there's due to be rain tonight. So I'm recording this on a Thursday night. Uh, and I believe it's going to be some rain on Saturday. So she may get her ground. Uh, the threats to Lucia are Poetic Music, who was sixth in the champion bumper at the Cheltenham Festival, and then went on to win a class four mayor's hurdle at Ludlow. And then... The other threat, I believe, is going to be Carol's Pass. Now, Carol's Pass won a mare's novice hurdle at Newbury on good ground, covering 11 stone eight. And she beat She's a Saint into second. So She's a Saint was carrying 11 five on that day. But this time round, Carol's Pass is carrying the same three pounds more than She's a Saint. But as Carol's Pass won by three lengths, She's a Saint still needs to find those three lengths to beat her. So that's my pick, Lucia. And now on to young Alex for his pick. Thanks for that, Ian. I like your selection there. Now moving on to the second race, which is the race I'll be previewing. Uh, the second race features a horse that I'm very keen on that I've also put up as an anti-post fancy for the festival. And that horse is, of course, Time Hill. Now, for those of you that haven't seen our anti-post videos, you can find them on the channel below. Just scroll through. Um, I'm sure you'll find the anti-post videos there. Uh, as I mentioned, the horse that I'm fancying for this race is Time Hill. Uh, once again, I'm going to keep it simple. He was the best of these horses over hurdles, and I think could be the best of these over fences. Um, and at current price of 5-4, to four, I think it's very good value. Now, moving on to the third race, we're going over to Antarctica to visit OJ, who's got a very strange hat on his head. Over to you, OJ. Thank you, Alex. Bloody freeze it here. Cost of living crisis and all that, terrible. Anyway, on to the 120 at Newbury on Saturday. The Sir Peter O'Sullivan, what a legend he was. Memorial handicap chase over two and three quarter miles. Um, obviously, very open race and I know very little about racing. Having a quick look near the top, the machine, when a race you touch during March, former that doesn't look to have worked out great. Um, Mr Coffee, I don't know, can't trust him. So, I've gone for one that I think could be a bit of each way value, currently around 12 to 14 to 1. Zanza for the master trainer, Philip Hobbs. 
down to a very attractive mark of 134. Loves it at Newbury. Three wins from four runs around here. Goes on any ground. As I said, very, very attractive mark. And I'd noticed he's been out a couple of times recently, so my eyes were drawn to him straight away. And I don't know, if you look back year by year, it looks, he could have been, this could have been the target. This race could have been the target all along, I'm thinking. Um, and also have a look, if you get a chance, at his record around this time of year, November, December. It's where most of his run, uh, most of his wins, seconds and so on have come. Just looks, looks like his time. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was the target. If you can get 12 to 1, 14 to 1 each way, I think that's a cracking bet. So there we go. Thank you very much. And I'll pass you over to Jamie. Thank you, OJ. Uh, this is Jamie Ryan here. <coughs> you might know me from Dave Young's channel, Gentleman Mental. I'm here to preview the 155 for Gentleman Exchange at Newbury on Saturday. Um, the favourite here is West Balboa, 17 England winner on his debut at uh, Warwick. Beat the well regarded, hasn't been seen either Queen's River by 17 lengths. Then went on to be second in Shallow Hurl Stage Star, and hasn't been seen since. Uh, I'd gladly pass him over here. Uh, we'll move on then, we'll bypass another horse there, and then we go to Peking Rose, who wanted entry, be the different kind, who really disappointed in the Great Wood. Um, I suppose there might have been something around stop very quickly. Uh, Peking Rose wouldn't be for me. Uh, then we have Porticello, I don't like four year olds going straight into handicap, or four to five year olds going straight into handicap. Maybe he looks like a big chase, tracking chaser to me, so I'm glad he passed him by. Um, the other horse, I suppose, Lord Baddesley, he was in the white hat form, red hat form of the Silver Trophy. A few winners have come out in Apper's Hill, it's obviously might be going on to the Christmas Hurdle. Um, the likes of an answer prayers, one at Cheltenham, <coughs> Prasima is going to Mar Newbury, who's fancy against uh, the mighty champ. Um, I suppose the only other horse that might have a chance each way in his current mood to a great form from a good form from last year. But the likes of Blazing Cow, Janino Bello, Belly Griffin Cottage, who's yet to come out, would look like a fine three mile chaser to me in the making. Uh, Janino Bello is running run the weekend as well. Blazing Cow, of course, very well backed for the stairs hurdle. But my selection, of, and it's an obvious one, and it's a horse I put up to follow at the start of the year, and it's walking on air. And uh, Henderson just thinks this horse is a grade one horse. Uh, one easy in a two mile novice at Newbury, the same track, horse form. Uh, then uh, ran in the three mile uh, grade one and was second favourite to three strike light. Bombed out that really that day. The experience wasn't there at his fourth day at that present time. Uh, I suppose the only good thing finally the form was franked by a uh, front well last to be by a horse called McLean. One easy at Flatwell. And I think this horse is kind of for two and a half miles, eventually up to three miles. They think it's a grade one horse. So my selection would be walking on air. So on to uh, a fellow I met in the toilet and can't remember talking to me. In the Clayton and Leopardstown of the DRF last year, Andrew Helligan. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I'm Andrew from the Finish Line Podcast, if you don't know, and I'm here to preview the 230 Newbury, the two mile intermediate handicap hurdle. Eight runners, decent enough field. We have second for the county hurdle in First Street here in at 11 to 4, carrying 12 stone. First run of the season for a five roll. I think that's going to be hard to. To do so, I am going with race fitness and a horse who is bringing me confidence from his last run, and that is Gary Moore trained Teddy Blue. Um, also, himself, he's a four year old, he had some good uh, form last season. He was three and a quarter lengths behind Nice Lou and Kempton, and he look he ran a decent enough race in the train, 25 lengths behind Vaughan. Um, this is um, a step up again from his maiden win last time out. But if we go back to his run first time out this season at Kempton. He he should have won to be honest. Uh, Jamie dropped his whip before the last, and if he had the whip, he was he was running on really well for a bit of pressure applied. And I think he would have won. He should have won really. Boom Town was in this race again. He's sixteen to one. Look, that tells you the story. They think uh, Teddy Blue is much more progressive horse than him. Um, full of confidence from his twenty length success last time. I think this, these kind of races, um, with a better caliber horses will drag him, um, drag him even more. He won't need to exert a, as much energy as he does um in his last two runs so i think he's in a progressive horse carrying uh 10 stone 11 which is a lovely race in weight and i think he'll take a lot of beating gary moore had a winner again throughout the week um as obviously gosh won last week as well um so yeah he's uh, he's my selection for this in the 230 intermediate hurdle at newbury and now on to ash who has the pleasure of solving the hennessy it's always going to be called the Hennessy. 
Thank you, Andrew, for that. And hello to the Cheltenham Exchange viewers. Thank you very much for having me on, lads. And you've given me the Coral Gold Cup. No pressure there. Uh, I've got a stinking cold. Hopefully, I can find the winner. Um, the one stat I'd be wary for, for viewers here, no five-year-olds won the race. So if you like Red Happy or Bustleton, just be careful on that. Uh, the, the the horse at the top of my list, Oscar Elite, um, off a pound low when he was third in the Ultima, ran a good race there. Uh, novice chase around Cheltenham in November 2021. He fell and going really well. That was one by three under three five. In second was Does He Know, so the form's worked out well. Oscar Elite doesn't mind better ground. Same goes for second selection and Sam who would be one I'd be keeping an eye on he wanted a big Ascot handicap chase of three pounds lower he wouldn't mind the better ground and he's already had a little bit of a pipe opener so he should be primed for this run fingers crossed he can go well for Wayne Clifford Evan Williams good luck John with your selection and thank you lads for having me on thanks Ash and good luck with your selection well it's a lucky last for me which is a two mile and half a furlong handicap chase which is jumping off at 340 I've tried to get the favourite, the six-year-old Amarillo Sky Beat, but looking down through the others, I'm struggling to do so. The favourite won his last start here back in February, over the same distance when rated only 135, I fancy him to repeat that on Saturday. He also won at Cheltenham earlier this month and seems the improving one in this field and I take him to win this. The biggest danger is only Money, who has shown some decent form this season. Finally, I want to thank Jamie, Andrew and Ash for their input into this video and I hope you've enjoyed the format of the two-day Newbury previews. Thank you for all your support. Keep liking and subscribing. Best of luck and let's bash those bookies.